Hello and welcome to today's Redback Business Skills webcast series. I'm Michael Bunker. I'm an employee here at Redback Conferencing. I am joined today uh, by Catherine Holliman. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about today's topic because I know we're talking about communicating to create a high-performing team. So once again, Catherine, thank you so much for taking the time. So you're joining us from behind the scenes communications. Great. Great. So look, uh, before we get started, guys, I'm just going to go into asking the audience, to you guys, a question. So how effective is your communication? So this is a poll. So this will be coming up on your screen right now. Um, so Catherine, you've been in this space for a while and you've been doing these mm -hmm. talks for a while. So tell me, how do people normally rate themselves on their communication? <laughs> normally could be better. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair enough. It's a skill, so. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> could always all be better. <laughs> um, well, the audience is starting to submit their responses now via the poll question. So I'll wait a little while longer just because I can see it all coming through. Um, I know I try the best intentions when it comes to my communicating, mm -hmm. but I sometimes fall a little flat. So I'm going to probably put myself down to somewhat effective mm -hmm. on it. Uh, the different options that we have for you guys is not effective, somewhat effective, very effective, and extremely effective. Um, we're going to close the poll now or stop the poll. So I've got 54.5% of the audience saying somewhat effective, which yeah, is where I would have put myself as well. Um, so you guys are in luck because this is why we're having the topic today because we know that communication is key for any organization and the success of it. So the next thing I want to ask is what high performance teams can you think of. So for the audience out there, use the ask a question button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you can start typing in different teams that you think are high performing. So Catherine, tell me, what are some of the high performing teams that you consider out there in the uh, world today? I mean, you can't go past sports teams. So yeah, you think absolutely. of the All Blacks, for example. I mean, a prime example of a high performing team. Yeah. For me, somebody um, working on a production crew of a movie is a part of a high-performing team. You watch yep. the movie credits roll and there's endless people part of that team to make the movie. It's yep. always amazing to me. But, you know, working in a hospital, yeah. high-performing team right there operating on those patients. Um, but right down through to small team, a family. Yeah. Mum and dad trying to get the kids to work on time. Oh, uh, the kids yeah. to work, the kids to school. Getting the kids <laughs> to school, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, from the audience, we've got a couple of people that have come through. Sports teams mm. are the ones that are, people are saying. Um, we've also got um, TV shows. Um, I've got one that's come through from road crash rescue teams, mm. which absolutely, yeah. I wouldn't even consider that. So, yeah, I guess your state emergency services and absolutely. stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, any others there? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Yeah. We got train workers. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Come from Karen. Thank you so much for that. Um, and yeah. Teams do, they come in all shapes and sizes. Yes. You know, from thousands, millions even, right down to, as I said, just a couple, but they all have one thing in common, and that is that their success relies on effective communication. communication. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get anywhere without effective communication. Um, so I thought what we'd start with is a definition of what effective communication actually is. So yep. if you think of communication, it's a process. It's a process of using signals, so words, voice, body language, behaviors, yep. to share information and exchange ideas and share thoughts and feelings um, with somebody else. Now, when that message is heard and interpreted and understood as the sender intended, yep. then what you have is shared understanding. And so the communication is said to have been effective because the message sent yep. is equal to the message received. Conversely, if there is misunderstanding, misinterpretation, then you have confusion, and that's really classed as ineffective communication. So the audience has, or the receiver hasn't received the message that the sender had intended. And in personal lives, in business lives, yep. that ineffective communication can have really negative impact. So let's take somebody mentioned about um, responders to a, an emergency environment and absolutely you know, there's a high performing team right there but if there's ineffective communication amongst that team it can sometimes be the difference between life and death yep. you know, really serious consequences there less serious perhaps but still very serious for themselves would be sports teams mm -hmm. ineffective communication can be the difference between winning or, or losing losing <laughs> <Very Yes. double. laughs> um, but again take it right down to the the family unit, ineffective communication at home can mean you know, there's no food in the fridge because you yep. wasn't sure who was going shopping or the kids' uniforms aren't clean. Um, in a business context, though, which is really what we're here to talk about today, ineffective communication can you know, result in lost time, resources, employees, customers, and even your reputation as a leader. 
there's been countless studies on yeah. the cost of poor communication. So David Grossman in the US did a research survey amongst large businesses, so with over 100,000 employees, so big teams, and per year, per company, they cited an average loss of si over 62 million US dollars per year. That's crazy. Per company, as a result of ineffective, ineffective communication, communication between, or to and between the team. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not just big teams. So SAS International did research for small to medium organizations, and they found that 17 and a half hours a week is spent clarifying miscommunication. That's 40% of the work week. That's absolutely crazy, because I look at this as well, and I know you've got employee engagement and retention mm. there, but the, the time and productivity uh, in a business like Redback, where we are service delivery and we're actually working with customers, yeah. if our event managers or project managers aren't effectively communicating, that 17 hours of clarification and everything can be blown at even more. Yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would I totally agree. It's at yeah. a minimum. It's at a minimum, <laughs> yes, really absolutely. Like, can you imagine, particularly for small teams, yeah. what you could achieve as a team if you got those so those 17 and a half hours back, back yeah. how much more productive you could be. And that really is the, the difference then between ineffective communication, which we've just talked about, yep. and the power of effective communication. So effective communication, as I mentioned before, is really what creates shared understanding. Yep. So everybody knows what they're on board for. Everybody knows their role. They know what's expected of them, and they know what they're working towards. So there's that shared understanding, that meeting of meaning. And that really creates a platform for trust mm -hmm. to be built. And trust, as we know from the likes of Gallup and Great Places to Work and many employee engagement surveys, it is one of the driving forces behind high employee engagement. Now, Gallup defines a highly engaged employee as somebody who's invested in their work, invested yep. in their workplace. So they're committed to it, they're dedicated to it. And as a result, what we find is that they tend to put in extra discretionary effort and that increases their performance and then that produces greater results for themselves, but also for the team as a whole and for the business or the organization, but also for other stakeholders, so your customers, for example. So effective communication isn't the sole source of these great results, but it goes a long, long way to helping to achieve these fantastic results. Um, if you look at some research again by Gallup, they found that employees or employers with um, who've achieved high engagement scores in their culture, they're um, able to achieve four times the success levels of those with lower engagement scores. And Towers Watson did a survey a few years back around the return of share to shareholders and highly effective communicators were able to um, deliver 47 percent higher total returns to their shareholders than organizations with less effective communicators. So what you're finding here is that, think back to those high-performing teams that we mentioned at the beginning, yep. behind every high-performing team, you'll find a highly effective communicator. So Absolutely. really important there, and that's something that I'd be really interested well, yeah. yeah. Well, let's open this back up to the audience again. So, guys out there, uh, which leaders do you consider to be highly effective communicators? So, again, use the Ask a Question button in the bottom right-hand corner. Type in a couple of leaders that you think. Um, so, Catherine, tell me, who do you think in the, out there in the world right now would be a highly effective communicator? There's so there's a few that spring to mind on a global level. You've got yes. Obama. Uh, we were having a conversation earlier about whether Trump should be up here, and, and I mean, in some <laughs> discretion, yes. Yes, he should. He <laughs> yeah. should really. I don't want him to be on the list. But for anyone who <laughs> communicated effectively, he did it. He's, that hurts me to say he's yeah. American. But yes. He did. Yeah, <laughs> highly perfective team. His campaign team. Yes, they was got amazing. The results. Yeah. Um, but the likes of Steve Jobs, he was a fantastic communicator. Richard Branson, Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. They've all built really high-performing teams as a result. By and large, due to their. <laughs> Sorry, I just got something from Karen online. Thank you. She said, not Donald Trump. Not but Donald Trump, yeah. Shouldn't be in there, but kind of should at the same time. We don't want to give it to him, but I'm going to say we kind of have to. Uh, Richard Branson's come through as yeah, well, again. Again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, closer to home, you've got the likes of the founders of Atlassian, you know, Scott Farquhar, mm -hmm. Mike Cannon Bricks. Great communicators, they have a high performing team. Um, Michael Abid from SBS, he's just been voted CEO of the year. Yep. Um, Lisa Messenger, Gail Kelly, all of these guys have built really high performing teams. And they're all great communicators. Yeah, got some of the comedians in here. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, has come in. Yeah, so not one I would have thought of off the bat, but I absolutely agree. Yeah, good communicator. Perfect. Um, <laughs> let's continue on. I think the the key with uh, with these guys is that they all understand the power of purposeful yeah. communication. And by purposeful communication, I mean they communicate with a purpose. Yeah. So back to Donald Trump, he had a purpose, and yes. that was to get elected and to communicate in a way that led to that. And that's why. 
Anyway, we'll leave that. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it. <laughs> but yeah, the, the but purposeful communication is... Absolutely, and it's so key because we're doing it anyway. We're yeah. constantly communicating something. And in a team environment, you're constantly communicating messages. You're sending signals. You're delivering words. You're acting and behaving in a certain way. So it's about making those, um, those signals more purposeful with intent. Yeah. And as the leader of a team, that purpose for your communication should really be to inform, inspire, engage and unite your whole team. So by informing, I mean, you need to inform your team of all that they need to know to be able to do their job to the best of their ability. And you need to inspire them to go the extra yeah. mile, to be committed to their work, to be the third one, they're engaged in their work, because that's when the magic happens. But primarily, you need to work to unite everybody behind a common vision, a common purpose, a yeah. common goal and direction, because that's when, again, if you think of those high-performing teams, the All Blacks, they all know exactly what role they need to play, they know how they contribute, and they know what they're trying to achieve. And that's the power of this, and that if you can inform, inspire, engage, and unite your team behind a common vision, goal, or purpose, then it results in everybody pulling in that same direction. And that's where change happens. That's where you get those fantastic yeah. results, because everybody's contributing towards the same result. It's, um, it's really quite powerful, and, you know, there's lots of messages that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that you can do to, to help you achieve that because you know, that's probably an obvious question that you might have there. And, well, how do you go about informing, inspiring, engaging, and yeah. uniting your team? What sort of messages should you be sending? Um, so I think you look here to the best of the best. You Absolutely. look to what they're doing, what the, the companies who have got the high-performing teams, what are they doing? If you look at some of the engagement surveys, the questions that they ask, many of those questions that they ask employees to rate are around communication. So we've got some of them there on the screen. Communication flows effectively from upper management to frontline employees, or when good or bad things happen, and that's really important, good or bad things. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> It's not all sunshine and roses, but you, your managers tell you about it. I don't know if you've ever been on the wrong end of ineffective communication. Oh, yes, where, I think everyone has. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's horrible. You, don't, you feel confused and you feel a bit lost in the dark, whereas one of the, the main things that you should be communicating or could be communicating is the mission and the purpose. That's probably mm -hmm. the primary one, is to start connecting your team with that vision and purpose for your business. Because whilst 82% of senior managers have a vision or a purpose and a direction for their team, yeah. and again, this doesn't matter whether it's a team of two or a team of 2000, yeah. it's still, you know, where are you now and where do you want to get to? You might have that, but only 38% of managers effectively communicate it in a way that their team connect with. There's a big difference here if we go back to the definition of communication that we talked about at the beginning. Yep. It's one thing to say it, it's has it been understood yes. by the audience, so in this case by your team. Um, and so that means have they connected with it? So you may have a vision, mm -hmm. you may have communicated in a way that by that, I mean you've told yep. your team, <laughs> but have you communicated it effectively? Do they really understand it? Do they connect with it? Gallup research has found that even just a 10% improvement yep. in connecting your team with your vision and purpose for your team can have great impact. So it reduces employee turnover by 8%, and it can increase profitability by 4%. So just that slight shift in connecting with your purpose for your team can make huge inroads. It really can. And like, those stats still astound me. I find mm. them, yeah. Now, I think I think every manager and every employee has always struggled with the communication aspect at one point in their career or not. But yeah, yeah it, it is that understanding, clearly articulating and making sure that they've connected the dots to see how they are actually impacting what you're trying yeah. to achieve. And yeah. it's, it's so important. There's a stat there, 41%, uh, this again was from a Gallup survey, but only 41% of employees in the survey cited that they know what my company stands for <laughs> and how, they make, how it differentiates to competitors. So again, if you think back to the high-performing teams, they all have have yeah. really, really strong visions, really strong purpose. They know why people show up to work every day, yep. you know, whether it's like Atlassian to unleash the potential of every team or Virgin employees to change business for good, no matter which part of Virgin business you're in. It's all the same, yeah, the same message. In that same direction. Westpac, they're in to help communities, people, customers to prosper and grow. Mm -hmm. That's their vision, that's their purpose. And Gail Kelly, the former CEO of Westpac, was 
uh, quoted in an interview as saying her communication of that purpose is absolutely key to their success. She talks about it everywhere. And as a result, in their last employee engagement surveys, 97%, that's a huge response rate, but 97% yeah. of their employees have said, yes, I understand how the work I personally do supports the vision of the company. And as I mentioned before, if you can unite everybody behind that, then you've got all these people, everybody in your team working yep. to achieve it. That's where massive results happen. That's so fantastic for alignment, for productivity, and to get those huge results as a team. So that's ultimately, we talked before about what sort of messages should you be or could you be con um, communicating to your team mm -hmm. to help with the performance. And that's where I'd start, is start connecting them to the big picture. Yep. So think about what's your vision? Mm -hmm. What's your purpose for your team? And what's the strategy and the plan to help you achieve that? What are some of the key measures of success? But fundamentally, how can individuals contribute? Make sure that there's a clear line of sight between the individual's role and the big picture. I'll be printing out the slide. <laughs> <laughs> um, and secondly, then, uh, there's a quote on here that I love, and I have to start with it, because um, it. Tom <laughs> Roth <laughs> and Barry Conchie, so they wrote the book Strengths Based Leadership. And in there, they write that a leader charging forward without any followers is just out for a walk. Yeah. And I think that's such a great quote, because it's absolutely true. You might have the best vision. Yep. You might have the most profound purpose. You might have a really clear plan mm -hmm. and direction. But if you've got nobody following you, if nobody's bought into it, if nobody's connected with mm -hmm. that, well, then you're, you're isolated, you're on your own trying to do all the heavy lifting. So the other um, messages that you need to be uh, sending to your team are messages that instill confidence in the future, but also in today yep. and in you as a leader. So they want to know that they can trust you, that you have their back, that you're in it for the long haul, mm -hmm. that you are going to do all that you can to help drive towards that vision um, and what they can expect from you as well as what you expect from them. Uh, uh, the same book there from uh, from Gallup, the, uh, they talk about the four needs of followers, what inspires a follower to follow a leader. Yep. And it's four things, so stability, hope, compassion, and trust. So you need to communicate messages that instill confidence in today, in the security of their job, that the business is safe, that the team is yep. doing well, or even if it's not doing well, that you're well equipped to face any challenges. Then you need to also communicate messages of hope of the future yep. and messages that instill confidence in yourself. Nice. And then lastly, I think messages that foster a culture of collaboration. Mm -hmm. You, know, you are all in it together. It is about uniting your team. So any sorts of messages that you can send that talk about the successes that you've had as a team, you know, we've achieved this together. Imagine what else we can achieve if we yeah. do this. So it's about sharing experiences, you know, good experiences, bad experiences, but you're all in it together. And if you can do that, if you can work to break down silos, mm -hmm. then it goes a long way towards achieving your purpose of informing, engaging, inspiring, and uniting your team. Very nice. Question. Question. Well, yeah, this is going to be a question for the audience. Mm. And so this isn't a poll or asking you guys to type anything in the chat box. I really just want to leave this up on the screen and ask to every one of you is, do you have a purpose, vision, and or mission um, that your team knows, understands, and connects with? Because I think that is a struggle that everyone has. I know that there's probably a bit of a disconnect between some of the members of my team and what we're trying to achieve. So I'm already in my head trying to address that and how <laughs> I'm going to right. effectively <laughs> communicate it <laughs> after this. Um, so yeah, just everyone think about that while we're going through the next part of this presentation. I think you mentioned a good part there in terms of how to effectively communicate it. Yeah. We've talked a lot, you know, there's, you, you know why communication yes. is important. I think we've covered that and people already have an innate understanding of why it's important. Yes. Hopefully I've just shared some of the messages that you should be communicating in terms of connecting them, but it's a big difference to then know it and to do it. So yes. as uh, Warren Buffett, the quote there on the screen talks about, if, if you lack the skills to effectively communicate and to get your ideas across to other people, then you're, you're not fulfilling your potential. Yeah. And as a leader, your potential really exists um, or relies on your ability to persuade your team to follow you. Um, your role as a leader is to paint the picture yes. <laughs> and then persuade them. But in order to persuade your team to follow you on your path and to help you achieve the vision that you have for your team, you first need to connect with them. And to connect with them, you need to be able to communicate with clarity, credibility, and compassion. Yes. I call this my connection point framework. <laughs> nice. Everybody loves a good Venn diagram. Yeah. <laughs> so 
connection point is really important. You need to be able to communicate with all three variables before you find that connection with your team and set the stage to persuade them to follow you. So the reason that you need all three is you might be clear and concise yep. in your communication and you might have a lot of knowledge and authority on your subject, you might be a credible um, leader, but if you're always communicating from your point of view, from mm -hmm. your perspective, and you lack empathy and understanding of your team's perspective, then they're going to see you as self-serving, and so they're not really gonna connect with you, they're not gonna buy into you as a leader, they're not gonna join you yeah. on that journey. Conversely, you might have the clarity and, and concision in your communication, and you might have taken the time to really understand your team's point of view, to get to know them, um, but you might lack credibility by way of, you might not really believe what you're saying, or you might not know what you're talking about, and in which case they're not going to believe you either, yep. they're not really gonna trust in you, and they're gonna see you as untrustworthy, so then they won't connect with you, they won't follow you as a leader. And then on the flip side, you might have that trust and credibility and you might have taken the time to really get to know your, your team and mm -hmm. understand their hopes, their fears, their wants, their needs, their driving um, motivators. But if they can't follow you, if they don't really understand what you're talking about, then you're going to confuse them. And if we're confused, then think back to that communication process. 17 Confusion. hours. Yeah, yep. 17 hours <laughs> unraveling, miscommunication. And so you're not going to connect with them, they're not gonna buy into you, they're yep. not gonna follow you on the journey. But if you can learn to communicate with clarity, credibility, and compassion, then you'll connect more meaningfully with your team, and that will help you set the stage to persuade them to buy into your vision, to buy into you as a leader, and to all charge in that same direction. And that's where you start seeing the results of high-performing teams. Very nice. Perfect. Okay, guys, so we've got another poll question for you. So the poll's going to pop up on the screen in just a moment, but which do you struggle with the most in your communication? So clarity, credibility, compassion. Out of those three, which do you think? So you've been doing this for a while, mm -hmm. and you've <laughs> educated a lot of people. Yeah. Where do people think they fall short? Where do they think they struggle the most with? Uh, I think they struggle the most in terms of how do I do all this? There's a lot to yes. think about here. and. There is, and it's a real mix, and this is in it for the long haul, so mm -hmm. you can't build credibility, for example, overnight. No. You build it day in, day out, minute in, minute out, whereas something like clarity, it comes down to your day-to-day -to -day communication. You can see the changes of that instantly. Yep. So I think the biggest mistake that I see people make is that they think it's a short-term thing. Yes. Uh, and it's not, it's a long-term process. Perfect. Well, look, we've got a number of responses from the audience now, so thank you all so much for participating in the poll. We got about 54.5% of the people saying clarity, mm -hmm. uh, and then 13% saying credibility, and 31% saying compassion okay. for this result. So thank Good. you guys so much. Well, hopefully we can help you with some of those. Yes. <laughs> um, theory is always great, but it's about the practical implementation. So I hope that some of these uh, tips and tricks will really help you start to improve your day-to-day -day yeah. communication in whichever area is most applicable to you. So I'll start with clarity. Mm -hmm. And in particular, one of the things to start really is about understanding how you think about your team. Where are you, where's your team now? Where do you want to be? How are you going to get there? What do you value as a leader? What, who are you as a leader? What are the key messages that you want to get across? You need to get clear on those in your own mind before you can actually start articulating yeah. them to your team. So you know, perhaps write down some more, take the time to think about what's your purpose for the team? What's your vision for the team? What direction and what are your values as a leader and how can people contribute? Mm -hmm. Once you know that, then you can start to communicate it outwardly to your team. And one of the ways that we communicate, one of the signals that we send is through our written work, yep. <laughs> emails, newsletters, <laughs> blog posts, however it might be. But in that written communication, remember that we're all human. Yes. So don't just write about the facts. Don't just write about the sales figures or the profit number or the, the market share. It's about the feelings as well. Remember, you're communicating to individuals. So find a balance between facts and feelings in your yep. written communication. Makes sense? Well, yeah, we talked about earlier with the collaboration of the team and sharing success stories and everything. Yeah. So the technology we're using today, which is just education and inspiring, mm. we also use it internally for our sales development and training. Great. So we use this for the purpose of doing similar setup mm. right now where I'll be interviewing one of the sales guys on deals they've been doing, yep. how they do it, what were the stress points and all that stuff. But it does come down to this, the facts and feelings is where you can portray mm. facts, details, but also portray the emotional journey and stuff that does allow people to connect a yep. little bit differently. And that's, you just shared a story there, and that's yep. why stories are so great in writing because yep. it allows you to make the general more personal and it yes. allows people to connect. And that's what we're trying to do here is to connect with your team. So that's one way, facts and feelings in your writing. Mm -hmm. Also keep your writing simple. Yes. Keep Kiss. it simple. 
your hands and extinct. Yes. Nobody reads legal documents? No. <laughs> uh, I do. Uh, <laughs> because they're so convoluted and so wordy, this is everyday language. You know, your team want to be able to understand you. They need to follow your train of thought. You don't want to confuse them. So keep your language simple. And then lastly, another thing is to reread things. Yes. All too often, people just kind of go blur, blurt out and hit send on the email or hit publish on a blog post without going back and thinking, does it make sense? So always, always reread it and think, what did I intend to achieve? What was my key message here? Has that come across? Have I articulated myself accurately? Is it easy to read? Is it easy to follow and easy to understand? Yeah, writing is always a tricky one because people read it with their own emotional intent, so Absolutely. they can read it a very different way from how you portrayed it. Mm, and it's especially true in heightened emotional yes. situations or <laughs> high stress situations. If you had a bad day and you've write, written a really important email off the back of this emotionally charged experience, Always pause, <laughs> go away, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, make a cup of tea and reread it because, again, it's all about if you think about that communication process, it's all about your audience. So, in this case, your team members and yeah. how are they going to interpret it. I always remember that. Um, I got sent an email once by a, a manager when I, I was working for a company, and the manager said, can I see you on Monday? And they sent this at Friday at 5 o'clock. Oh, God. And so all weekend, <laughs> you're thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm going. Yeah. So it's just simple things like that. Are you sending it at the right time? <laughs> and, and what are you putting in it to alleviate any misinterpretation and therefore ineffective communication? Yes. So next we've got verbal communication. Mm -hmm. So you might have written this fantastic presentation, this keynote speech, but the way that you use your voice can actually change the meaning of those words. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to think, well, how can I use my voice to maximum effect to start connecting with my team? And you've got great tools in your verbal tool toolbox. So she says hitting her microphone. <laughs> uh, so you've got your voice, you've got your volume, you've got your emphasis, so where mm -hmm. you place the intonation, the emphasis. You've got the rate at which you speak, you've got the pitch, the tone, the range, yep. you've got the articulation, you've got your, the use of your lungs, which is like your power source to your breath. So really start tuning into your own voice, listen to yourself. I know a lot of people don't like that, <laughs> but if you just listen to yourself to see how, or hear rather, how you come across to your audience yep. and to your team members, you'll start thinking, well, if I think I sound monotone, then my team will probably think I sound monotone. So how can I inject a bit more enthusiasm into my voice so that they get enthused by what I'm talking about? And simple things like that can go a long way to Absolutely. helping connect. Um, and the, the last part here I'd say is about articulation, especially if you're trying to uh, increase somebody's understanding of what you're saying. If it's a complex subject, mm -hmm. taking the time to really articulate your words <laughs> accurately is really important. And lastly, on the clarity side, we've got nonverbal communication. And this kind of falls into two parts. One is your body language, mm -hmm. your facial expressions. And then the other side is what other nonverbal um, tools do you use? So like signals, diagrams, for example, like the one that you see on the screen now. Yep. You're, you're trying to communicate a message. So use all the signals available to you to help you communicate it. So in this instance, right here, right now, I'm using my words, I'm using my voice, I'm using my body language, and I'm using the things that are on the, the slides that are on the yep. screen. So we've got four signals that I'm hoping is getting the message across to you. Movement's one of my big ones. Uh, yeah. If I wasn't holding this iPad, I talk with my hands, and so, I just so very I. loud, so <laughs> this is to keep me restrained. <laughs> I read a, um, a quote once about if you get an Italian to sit on his hands, you're rendering him speechless. <laughs> I thought, well, I, I'm not Italian, but not maybe Italian, I should be. Okay. <laughs> but when it comes to your body language, just, again, tune into your, uh, remember the nursery rhyme, head, shoulders, knees and toes? Yeah. And just think about, well, where's my head? Am I, am I keeping my head down or am I, is my head proud? Remember, you're trying to instill a sense of confidence. So you need to make sure that your body language is mirroring your words. It's one thing if you're giving a talk to your team, a team meeting, if you need to instill Still confidence, but you're sitting small and you're, um, you're shrinking into yourself when you actually need to project confidence. So start tuning into your body language to make sure that it's reinforcing and it's in harmony with your written communication and your verbal communication. Nice. Perfect. Okay, well, it goes into another poll question for our audience. Okay, everyone, so on the screen right now, we're launching another poll to go into our next section. So where can you improve the clarity of your communication? So we just went through all of this right now, so this is the practical side of things. So after hearing that, where can you improve clarity 
of your communication. Um, I think definitely one of the ones that I would be looking to do in the future is my verbal side, because I think I am quite an emotional person <laughs> in all the best ways. It's not a bad way. I'm not going to just burst into tears for no reason, but I am reactive to my emotions because that's what drives me. Yep. I'm very, I fight for customers. I like to work internally and to make sure things are happening, but I get a little bit too passionate in my email sometimes and do exactly what you say. Run over, keyboard warrior, hit send, <laughs> and then instantly regret what I've just sent. Instantly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, a great one, and it's it's something that you can start to to do today. Yeah. There's no reason why you, you can't implement some of these immediately. And that's the whole idea is to yeah. start using this as practical tools to help improve your communication with your team. Perfect. So the audience has come back and thank you guys so much for participating. Uh, where can you improve the clarity of your communication? So we've got 10% in thinking, 16% uh, saying writing, 53% saying verbal, mm -hmm. and 19% saying nonverbal. Okay, nice. oh, really good mix. Well, really good mix. That's been of some help. Perfect. So the next thing we have is credibility. And yep. Credibility is a, a long-term gain. So we talked just then about cl clarity in your communication, and you can start to make improvements in that straight away and see the impact as a result. Credibility is more about the long-term, and it's how can you communicate in a way that helps you earn trust mm -hmm. and build credibility, and that's how credibility is defined. Credibility is probably the number one reason, in fact, it is cited by researchers as the number one reason people follow a leader. So it's really important to start thinking, well, in my daily communication with my team, yep. how can I build credibility? How can I earn trust? And first and foremost, tell the <laughs> truth. <laughs> Open and honest. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's no room and no need for insincerity with your team. So open, honest, authentic communication mm -hmm. is what's called for. That's how you build your credibility. It's about keeping your word. It's about making realistic promises and following through. You've heard the expression, talk the talk and walk, walk the, the walk. walk. Yeah. You need to do it. You, it's one thing saying something, whether it's written communication, written and verbal, or you know, a presentation, but you need to follow through. If something goes wrong mm -hmm. or mistakes are made, that's okay, we're all human, we all make mistakes, but be accountable, own up to the issue, take responsibility yep. and be accountable. That's a great quality in terms of, and a great way to help at least build trust and earn trust. Absolutely. The next one is knowledge and expertise. Mm -hmm. So share, we, we tend to trust people mm -hmm. that are able to help us solve problems or to provide insight to help us progress in our lives. So if you've got knowledge and expertise in an area, then share that knowledge generously with your team to help them progress and um, provide insights. It's not about being a know-it-all here. Yep. It's about using your knowledge and experience. It's what freely. you're doing today. Oh, well, I like to think so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, exactly right. Yeah. It is what I'm doing today. So yeah. uh, think about ways that you can share your knowledge and your experience um, so far and what has got you to where you are today with your team members so they too can progress and, to, and can learn more. Perfect. And then lastly, it's about having confidence and conviction, not only in yourself as a leader, but in your vision for the team, in your ability to achieve it, and in your team's ability to achieve it. So that confidence and conviction is really key. It's about yep. self-assurance. It's not about arrogance. No. There's a huge difference between being assured and being arrogant. So it's about having that self-belief, and it's not just about having it, it's about demonstrating it. Yep in your communication. So the way that you write, the way that you use your voice, the way that you hold yourself and conduct yourself, mm -hmm. not just in presentations and from the stage, but how you greet people, how you greet your team in the morning, how you address them in a team meeting, it all should signify this confidence in you as a leader and in your team and in your abilities as a team. Perfect. Well, looking at credibility now, let's go into another poll question. So that's the why. How are you guys going to put this into practice? So how will you build your credibility through your communication? So on this poll question, we got truth and authenticity, uh, knowledge and expertise, uh, confidence and conviction. Mm -hmm. So straight off the bat, I think knowledge and expertise is one of my favorites when I look mm -hmm. at people doing the credibility. I love running these business skills series because I get to work with lovely people like yourself, but you get to expose people into the knowledge that you have and the ex mm. uh, expertise um, while also upskilling and educating other people out there. Because mm. you never know by giving out into the world, you want to take it back. And that's what it's all about, yeah. in that you expect something from your team so by sharing this knowledge freely, you're, yes. you're helping them to live up to your expectations. So why wouldn't you share it? What's the danger of it? Exactly. Perfect. So look, uh, audience, thank you so much, everyone participating in the poll. We've got 23% saying truth and authenticity. We've got 
52% saying knowledge and expertise, which is great, mm. and then 23% saying confidence and conviction. So there's a nice, great split there again. So thank you guys so much. And let's look at the last part of your circle. Mm, and Stephen Covey, in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the sixth habit, and yep. brilliant habit to adopt, is seek first to understand, then to be understood. Yep. And I think that goes a really long way in terms of explaining really what I mean by compassion. Mm -hmm. It's not about sympathy. It's not about... Um, being the other person. It's about communicating from their perspective yep. and understanding them so that you can communicate in a way that connects with them. So be present, ask questions, yep. get to know your team. If you think of the most effective leader that you've perhaps had in your life, think about the time that they would have taken to get to know you as an individual. I can think of some great managers that I've had where it wasn't all just work. And I'm not saying you need to go out for beers or coffees yeah, and yeah. all the time, but you need to just ask questions, show genuine interest in them. Yeah. Uh, use active listening techniques to show that you're seeking to understand, to deepen your understanding and really engage them in that conversation to help demonstrate and to help you improve your communication with them. I love the diagram, I can't remember who does it, but it's the iceberg model, mm. where you only see above the surface level of the water yeah. and never understanding truly below what's happening in a person's mm. life. And it's only by asking questions and taking an interest that you'll actually see below the surface. So yeah, yeah. that um, listen and learn is an absolutely key and vital one. Very much so. And then I'd say about flexing your style. By, by that I mean, we all have our individual personalities. We all have our unique styles yep. and the way that we like to do things, the way that we like to communicate. But as a leader, the onus is kind of on you to flex your style in order to match or mirror your team members. People like to spend time with people that they feel comfortable with. Yes. So it's in your best interest to help you connect with your team, just to learn how to flex your style a little bit. Um, by that I mean if you've got a, a shouter in your team, perhaps meet them with a bit more volume than you would do normally, um, mirror body language, and I don't mean you copy yeah. exactly what they say, <laughs> they scratch their head, you scratch your head, yeah. but make them feel comfortable or work to make them feel more comfortable. And the best way to do that is to observe them. If you can see that somebody's a quieter person, then tone it down a bit, be a little bit more um, relaxed with them. If you can see that somebody is a bit more informal, then perhaps become a little bit less formal yourself, or conversely, if you see somebody who likes the, the rules and the regulations, then meet them with that to help them feel more comfortable yeah. and to help you connect with that individual. And the last one is about knowing your filters. Mm -hmm. So we all run on our own sort of operating software <laughs> uh, and that that's based on the lens or the frame of which we view the world. We yep. all have our own lens and much like the lens on your smartphone where you take a photo and you put the lens on top of it, you've, you've got filters. Yeah. to change the perspective. And that's really what you need to understand from your own perspective, that what lenses or what filters do you have in place that may bias your communication? So the way in which you not only send communication, but also the way in which you interpret it. The more familiar you can become, the more aware you can become of your own filters. So for example, your age group in relation to your team your gender, your background, your ethnicity, your work experience, your sporting interests or non-sporting interests, whatever it might be. But these all frame the way in which you view the world and so therefore inform how you start to communicate. So if you can understand your own, you can remove any bias. And likewise, if you can learn to understand any filters that your team members might have, yep. then you can start communicating in a way that matches them or that um, will connect more meaningfully with them. We were talking before about um, age differences yes. in big teens and the need to communicate with a 25 year old and a 55 year old there's a huge filters at play there just from an age perspective alone in terms of how they view the world yes and your role as a leader is to get to know those filters so that you can get through them and really hit home and start to connect with each of those team members accordingly and it's really important to remember that one size doesn't fit all so you can't just say send a blanket email out to the team yeah. and expect everybody to, to interpret and to understand it the way in which you intended if you haven't catered for the different filters. Um, and, and that's something that we'll touch on shortly around how to go about doing that.
Perfect. Well, that leads us into mm -hmm. our final poll for today. So everyone out there, so how can you show more compassion in your communication? So we've got, listen, uh, flexing my style, and know the filters. Uh, and we spoke just briefly before we went live today about, um, I had a member of my team who English was a second language. And every time I was trying to provide feedback or anything, their face would scrunch up and they get, the body language would yeah. completely change. And I thought it was an arrogance thing that they thought they knew more than me. And it wasn't until I realized that they were actually translating what I was saying in English back into the first language, and the look on his, their face was trying to just understand it. So it completely changed the way I was communicating with that person afterwards, because I was getting very defensive. I was like, why do they just think they know better than yeah. me? But it wasn't until I flexed my style and changed and actually looked at them with compassion. I was like, oh no, I'm actually doing this completely wrong. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the audience, perfect. So we've got 34% of you guys saying that listening mm. is one of them. Flexing my style was only 7%. Mm -hmm. uh, and then know the filters, 57%, oh, so fantastic. quite a large side there. Yeah, it'd be great Perfect. to see the difference that that can make. Yes. So that's a circle complete, mm. so tell us more. So more, so the biggest barriers to this yeah. actually taking place is a lack of consistency. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a long haul thing, so communication is a life skill. Yes. I think Richard Branson describes it as the most important skill that a leader can have. So it's about making sure that you're embedding this day in, day out. And it takes time, there's no denying it, but if it's not consistent, then what happens is your team starts to get blurred messages and a, an inconsistent picture of you as a leader. And these are just images of the yes. leaders that we mentioned before. And if you can't see them, if they don't know the real you, if they don't, if they, you're communicating with them in one way one day and then another way another day, and that's inconsistent over time, then that whole trust will be jeopardized and so it's about thinking how can I be consistent in my communication with them. One of the best ways to do that is with a communications plan. It doesn't have to be complex yep. but it does just need to have a few things in mind that hopefully I can share with you now. So first and foremost before you put together a plan ask your team. Make sure you ask them how do they want to be communicated with? What information do they need to know and want to know? What um, frequency do they want to receive the communication? What channels do they want to receive yep. the communication through? And again, some people will say email, other people will say, I want face-to-face. -face. And that brings me to the next point there, is about you need to have a mix of channels. One size doesn't fit all. So as a leader, it's about making sure that you are getting your key message across. So let's say you want to make sure they understand your vision for the team and how they can all play a role. You don't just communicate it once, yeah. you have to con consistently communicate it through a mix of these channels. And it goes then to the third point, it has to be consistent messaging. Uh, There's a conversation I was having with a client, it's just, oh, I'm so bored of just saying the same thing <laughs> over and over again. That's fine, you might be, but your team won't be. Just because you've said it, it doesn't mean that they have heard it, interpreted it, and understood it as you intended. And it's not a flash in the pan, particularly when it comes to messages around your purpose and your vision. That's more of a long-term message, but it warrants repeating. Yep. And it needs repeating in order to connect. And lastly there, it is about having a consistent feedback loop and you consistently checking in with your team to make sure that they have understood you as you intended, that there is in fact shared understanding, that your communication has been effective. And you're not going to hit the mark every single time, but it's like any plan, it's a moving fee, so it's about changing and tweaking it to make sure that you're getting that cut through over time as much as possible. Perfect. And lastly, it's about <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Like any skill, yeah. it takes practice. So um, start thinking about this for the long term rather than just, right, today I'm gonna change it and all will be done, tick in the box, next. Not really realistic there. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, everyone, we do have a few minutes left. We're probably gonna run over. If you guys have any questions that you'd like to submit, please use the Ask a Question button in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, for those of you that do have to leave us now because we have taken up our 45 minutes, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. We will have this online in the next 48 hours for you to come back and finish off watching the Q&A section. Um, but Catherine, before we, um, the three main key takeaways mm -hmm. that you wanna give people right now, because you've gone through a lot of information, mm -hmm. What are the three main things that you want to leave our viewers? I'll probably just drill it down to one. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's to, fine. to one key message for you is that there's something of a paradox in the simplicity of communication, but in its complexity. Yep. Now, it's very simple to understand, and I'm sure that viewers have been sat there going, yep, yeah, I know that, I know that, I know that. 
and that's great. The complexity comes particularly during times of high stress or high stakes or when we're busy, in terms of communication tends to fall by the way. Yep. But the problem is it doesn't fall by the way because we're constantly communicating something to another person, so in your case, in your, to your team. So it's about tuning in to the messages that you're sending yeah. because you're communicating with them anyway. So start practicing purposeful communication. If you can start communicating on purpose in order to inform, inspire, engage, and unite your team, mm -hmm. then that's really when you'll start to see the results happening. That's when they'll start to get more engaged. That's where they'll start to um, put in that extra effort. But it all starts with effective communication. Nice, very good. Well, perfect. Thank you so much again for joining us. I got a lot out of this. <laughs> um, and I know my team's got to get a lot out of this afterwards. Um, but we got some questions from the online audience. So Karen's asked, how do you delicately inform someone else that their communication style, especially clarity, is lacking, uh, especially if they're more senior? Um, open, honest, <laughs> authentic yeah. communication. So I would sit the person down. First off, I'd check in, um, observe them, how you think they like to receive the information. Um, and if it's if it warrants a more of an informal chat, yep. take them for a coffee and say, I've been a bit confused around this and this. Perhaps let them know how you yourself like to receive communication yes. um, and what works for you. And then prompt the question, how do they like to be communicated with? And hopefully that will just open the dialogue for you then to... Um, make improvements. Perfect. Uh, I got a question from Luke, and he's asked, how do I know if, I'm com if I've been effective in his communications? That goes back to what is the purpose of your communication? What, um, how do you want to measure the success? So we typically communicate with a reason, so either to inform or to educate. Um, so, for example, in this, the a way that I know if I've been effective is whether or not you're answering the questions to the poll, whether or not you're submitting any questions yep. yourselves. Um, if this was a live conversation, it would be if there were nods of the heads, if you were taking notes. So that's how I would start to gauge my effectiveness. And then, obviously, the ultimate test is if I was to check back in with you in a week's time or two weeks time and then it's a year's time to say, loop. yeah, is, is that feedback loop in place? So think about with any piece of communication, whether it's a single email or whether it's about the purpose of yep. your team and benchmark where you are now and where you want to be and see if it's uh, instilled a change in behavior. Perfect. So I had a question from Guy. What are the best communication channels to use? <laughs> Depends on your audience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always a case of a mix of channels. Mm -hmm. In particular, for, from a team perspective, firstly, ask them, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. ask them how they like to receive their information. Now, that's not always easy to do, particularly if you've got a remote team, but there's, you know, technology is a great thing, <laughs> exactly as we're doing here today. Use technology to you know, send a survey and just say, how do you want to receive information? When do you want to receive it? Do you prefer online, offline? Um, one way, two way, there should always be a mix of one way communication from you out to your team, but two way, make sure that they're able to communicate back to you. I really like that. I didn't think about it in that way. It's quite funny because you look at some of the technologies in the marketplace, mm. and I know our delivery team, they use WhatsApp chat mm. for Brilliant. all their on site communications, and that's even blast out messages for yep. updates to platform everything. It's not a conventional corporate communication yep. tool, but it works for them. Um, we even have snapback conferencing as a snapback, yep. Snapchat channel of, um, stuff that happens on sites and everything so it's fun and it's informative yeah. um, so there are a bunch of different technologies right. you can use out in the marketplace but it is that as you've just said there should be a two-way communication mm. receiving and giving feedback as well as or communications as well as a one-way that direct communication that you need to be providing yeah. it's as all well. about asking them and then creating a mix yeah great uh, I got a question from Paul is there such a thing as over communicating with your team <laughs> there's such a thing as creating noise for the sake of creating noise, yeah. um, but in terms of consistently communicating the big picture and how individuals can and are contributing to success, then no, it's the repetition of yeah. it, as long as it's for a purpose. Yeah. Um, and again, it goes back to ask your team what they want to receive, because there's no point in spending all this time putting together a load of communication materials just for it to fall on deaf ears, so you might as well take the time up front to find out how they want to receive their communication. Perfect. To find out. Um, 
anyone else that has any questions, please send them through. We'd love to get to them in the next couple of minutes. But for our audience who are joining today, you're giving away, well not giving away, but you provide a free consultation mm. session. Yep. Where it's a one-on-one -on -one session, which is great. So at the bottom of your screens, next to the ask a question button is a, a link just there. So you can submit a form and Catherine will reach out to you straight away. Yep. Um, but look, our audience, you've provided a lot of information to today and you covered a lot of stuff that people do need to implement. What's the number one mistake that you have seen from people who know that they have to do all this and then they jump into it? What's the big mistake to avoid? To avoid, I think to give yourself time to know that it is a nudge forward, nudge forward, like any skill. And I was talking to a, an entrepreneur last night who has the flip, the switch has suddenly flipped. Yep. And he's just understood the power that effective, purposeful communication can have on his team. Yep. So, but he's in it for the long haul. And if you are, if you think back to the greatest leaders that you've had in your life and their communication skills, you know that they would have been practiced and uh, practiced over time. So stick with it. Nice. Got a question that's just come through from Andrew. So thanks for the question. Any ideas on addressing a lack of emotion within electronic communications? Question mark. LOL doesn't cut it. <laughs> no, emo emoticons. Emoticons don't cut it. No. Um, again, it would come back to your use of language. Uh, so the first thing I would say is what message is it that you're trying to communicate? Yep. And is written communication the most appropriate channel for that? Would a video message be more appropriate or an audio message? So think about what is it that you're trying to communicate. Typically, the more complex or the more... Um, uh, emotionally charge the message, then perhaps written communication just isn't the best channel. So that would be my first point. And secondly, just think about the words that you're using and some of the evidence and remember that it should be a mixture of facts and stories and real life human elements. Nice. Uh, and to anyone who's out there who wants to learn about different communications tools, such as the one we're using today, please provide your feedback in, above the slides. In there as well as a little section is if you'd like to reach out for Redback to reach out to you and talk to you about these different communication styles, we're happy to do that as well. Um, Catherine, thank you so much for joining today. Thank I got thank so you. much out of this and I'm knowing the audience has as well, but I will point everyone's attention back to that feedback. We do value your feedback. Mm -hmm. It helps us create more content like this and for us to tweak it. So please provide as much detailed information. But again, thank you so much for joining. I've got a lot out of it uh, for our audience out there. I hope you did too. And we'll be putting this online within the next 48 hours. So once again, thank you. Thanks very much for having me. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks everyone.